joke's on you. It turns out the campaign isn't over. I wanted to play one more episode with the elephants against the Antigonids. So welcome back to Rome Total Realism Imperium's Rectum version 0.6. One last time for the Achaeans. I've already done most of the mundane shit off camera. We're here to watch elephants steamroll. So my boats have been maneuvering around, knocking out enemy navies. I've been building stuff. I've used all my cash. I have been gathering armies, moving forts. And now it's time for the fun part of the turn, the part where the elephants tear shit up. And that means you need to figure out ahead of time where the forts get dropped. Now, I'm tempted to go here and drop a fort over this, because we can just block them off here. Is this a route through? No, this is a pass. Can't go through here either. So I can drop a fort here, and that would prevent them from getting in, and I could take these two settlements. But there is a lot more out this direction. There's much more bunched up territory. So the real question becomes, how much military is actually on this side? How many stacks do I see? Because I see a city I would love to own. Uh, Antigonids, where's your kingdom? You're sieging the Seleucids, or just standing next to them, maybe. Oh no, is it a single fort right here to wall this to what you'd have left? It's looking like that might be the case. Let's bring some other people over because we're starting to lose line of sight. We know this is where we would fort wall and we're safe to fort wall there. Let's move this spy further in, get vision again. I should have a third spy in the neighborhood. I just lose track of them all. Yeah, here he is, way further to the left than I thought he was. We don't need to watch this anymore. It's successfully been fort walled. So we're going to run over to roughly the same position and then take the one that will have more movement left and move him up. And we can see a full stack above us. Terrifying. But we can also see that if we were to drop a fort on this area right here, then you just wouldn't be able to get through. It looks like there's a pass on both sides, but you would just drop a fort here and a fort here and you'd be good. So let's begin dividing and conquering. The question is just do we go left or right first with the elephants? And I'm tempted to think that the answer is left. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we should be going right first, but we just go up through and then cut right. Because it looks like you can do that. And then we'll have someone normally siege down Dion in the middle. That seems very reasonable to me. Let's go. Begin the siege. They've got three units of spearmen here, so just maintain siege for a second. This army needs more spearmen and probably didn't need these guys. Let's just grab all the spearmen from this army that was coming to reinforce, send them up. And now handle the siege with relative ease. You love to watch the enemy just run back and forth in range of your slingers. I mean, I know it doesn't really do anything in this version. You were firing for quite a while there and only killed 10% of them, but still, that's pretty solid. All right, the javelins from all of my 304 away might have done a lot more. Yeah, that unit's gonna get wiped now. Oh, I'm surprised to see a couple of them are still alive. Literally a couple of them, just two. Well, it looks like the fight's joined. I don't imagine it's gonna go great for my enemies here. Because they're both going to be surrounded, they're both going to be, you know, it's just going to be bad. It's going to be terrible for them. And we want to back off on this one and come over here. Actually give the move command to get them involved. And at this point, I think there's really not a lot to think about. Like, I don't enjoy grinding it out on the point and taking more losses. But at the same time, with two units of hoplites on the point, I feel like this is the fastest way through it in terms of real lifetime. I could probably save a couple of troops from trying to push them off the point somehow, but it's not worth the real life energy. So even with relatively low effort strats, we're still only losing a little over a hundred men to wipe them out. Not too bad, really. This is a victory fit for the gods. A day of triumph to mark with a song. 120 all told, still not great, but I'll live with it. All right, first city down, enslaved like everything else. Nothing to do but to push this man back. We can't actually prevent him from getting inside the city, unfortunately. Oh, we can. He doesn't have enough movement speed. That makes life simpler. They have a lot of Celtic and other barbaric mercenaries, it looks like. Better cab than me to be sure, but this army looks fairly weak, although I really should have replaced these guys. Just real quick, I may as well stack the deck in my favor as much as I can. What nearby army has movements? This guy has tons. Let's send out the mercenary hoplites and some more 304 away, just to swell my numbers a little bit for this fight. And now we'll take them on the field. Looking at this, my enemy does appear to have left their actual long-range units at home. So suppose that colors my strategy a little bit, doesn't it? We just want to get in range on the skirmishers, or on the slingers, rather. And the rest of this is just, like, gonna be brutal, to be honest. 
It's not a lot of intricate thought that needs to happen. Bring that forward just a little bit. My enemy appears to be charging my elephants, but I don't think it's going to go well for him. Yeah, the sheer volume of javelins they took, and now there's going to be javelins going into their rear as they fight my general, although my general will also be taking jabs, unfortunately. Why would you need to move backwards? Also, stop. Elephants charge into the back of the cav and help the general. That seems like a thing that you should be able to do, to be honest. I don't know if you can, but it feels like you should be able to run into enemy cavalry and do good work. Yeah, they routed immediately upon being touched by Cav. Do your best to get some more kills as they move around. And yeah, we don't need to do anything else. They turned around. That's not going to go well for them. All right, General, stop running in circles. You stop running in circles. They've thrown away their heavy Cav for basically just half my General's unit. That's nothing. And beyond that, they're all just sort of milling around, so I'll triple speed it until they get their shit together. It looks like they've gotten their shit together. We're going to run forward here. Keep fanning out on the side with the hoplites. Run the general down the line to be near the fight for morale. He's not going to need to actually do anything else. This guy looks like he might be trying to get to my spearmen. Sorry, get to my elephants, rather. We're not quite in range on the theory of Foroy. We need to move up just a little bit closer. That routed to the squaddy of javelins hitting it. You get them. All of this move up so you can shoot people who are running away in the near future. You get closer to the fights. You want your morale buff. They've cracked immediately. New deal. Chase those guys down. You're officially dealing with runners. All three of these come forward. The rest of this move forward a little bit less. You continue to fan out. Elephants. Or cavalry as they're so fond of calling themselves. Like, you'd think I needed the elephants, but apparently not. Keep running forward, no reason to do anything else. Oh, you're gonna charge? With the general? I don't know about that. Form the box, so that no matter where they go, we have this around. I reckon the enemy general's gonna be very dead very soon. It's gonna run this way and be sort of near the phalanx. I don't know if I have, like, an area of effect morale debuff, that's a thing, or if it's just like right next to me, that should be fine either way. Everyone throw at him. Try to get that guy dead. And uh, you guys shoot at him as well. All of this, get this phalanx in the middle. Their Celtic Light Cowboy get caught shortly. Any chance? Evidently not. Oh well, we tried. I guess he gets to live and fight another day. Elephants, run that down to the best of your ability. Cab, stop getting ran around. There's no reason to do that. Slingers come up and look in this direction so that I can get them once they turn around. And it's basically run down at this point. There's there's one phalanx that's just doing phalanx shit on very hard and just refusing to route. Like, what is... There we go. But Phalanxes just have a ton of morale. Even the basic draw of speed is at 15 is so much. Gonna grab all of my spearmen, form up in the line. These guys target that. Elephants, I guess head over so you can shoot at them. May as well give the attack command. I reckon you can beat Light Cav. There we go. So we killed 500 of their 577, and they managed to get about 80 of us. Pretty solid stomp. It's what you'd expect. We outnumber them 3 to 1 with roughly same quality units. Only a little bit worse, I think. Now, he might think he can hide inside those walls and be safe, but he'd be wrong. However, first things first, let's fix this. Let's stop carrying around these injured units for no reason. So these three do not need to be here and should be getting a general and heading back to be retrained, for sure. Infantry will be slowed down and able to move as far as I would like them to, so I'm gonna run forward to here on this group of infantry. I'm not going to move to the left. I think we can finish this with what we currently have. There's no reason to bring more troops this way, so let's just do this attack now. I don't know why I'm looking at other stuff. The content of this army is miserable. It's just the stuff we killed previously and then a new general. They're dead as hell. They don't stand a chance. The slingers on their own might be able to do it. They have 91 men total. 
And the slingers took offense to that, apparently. This just feels like bullying. Like, I'm running my general around killing units of three guys. Like, these mercenary Celtic skirmishers might have been a good unit at some point in time. I don't know what their melee stats are, but there's seven of them, so I don't care either. Hey, okay, mercenary Celtic light cap. I wonder if they'll do better. Probably not, right? Do not want to fight their general, though. Although I'm miscontrolling this pretty aggressively. Let's just get our general out at this point. And we can throw rocks at their general and feel better about ourselves. And to wrap this up, let's just bring in the entire line of units. Any one unit of spearmen equals, actually far exceeds now the count of their troops. So trying to use the general anymore is just a pointless risk. Let's just go win the fight. And I think we can win the fight just by throwing in the mercenary hoplites. They'll probably win after losing less than 20 guys. But it also means their losses will result in a better Fort Garrison down the line. I swear, he'll be here any second. There we go. So he's lost three men so far. Six, I think. I don't quite remember what he started at. Seven. It seems like it's going fine. Victory seems certain only a fool could lose this battle. I don't know. Those seven guys could kill all 82. You got to watch out for that. The remaining four don't seem to have great odds. The king is going... <laughs> Doing his best, but it's just stupid. It's just so bad for the siege. <laughs> this was the most foregone conclusion of any siege I've ever fought. Although I will say this one spearman's putting up a hell of a fight. There we go, final lap. Another one down, another city enslaved, and it's time to drop a fort. I think the answer is you push into their land and you build it here. Oh, I thought there was a tile beyond this one. In that case, we're better off being one back and building it here. Fortify position. We want a garbage unit to throw into this. We're ones around yeah, somewhere. In fact, he just sent several back home. Whoops. Honestly, this general's cab will be fine for now. No, 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 no. I see that route. Uh, what? <laughs> I hit numlock or insert or something and it jumped down there. You psychopath, don't go through the Macedonian city that you can see on the map. What's wrong with you? All right, so we bring our faction here. Yes, yes, what? Yes, um, there appears to be some sort of movement glitch where my faction leader no longer has any movement left. Well, I guess someone else is leading the army then. Let's go find out who it is. My lord? Yes, Do we need a leader for the next fight? I mean, honestly... Yes. Let's just go set up here, see what's inside. Yeah, we can handle that no problem. I would like to send a leader. But first things first, they're furious, they need a garrison. They're furious, they don't need a garrison. Alright, this army from the coast has made it far enough forward that it can join up. They're gonna send this. Oh, there's too many. I mean, honestly, I just need the general. I'll take some range units too, I guess. The rest can wait. And now we can do the next assault. And like the rest of this episode, and in fact this entire campaign, this is a foregone conclusion. They just have the two melee units. But I really wanted the satisfaction of getting another turn of rampaging with these elephants. It's so much fun. It's so viscerally satisfying to just tear down half the Antigonid Kingdom in two turns. You will notice a familiar strategy being employed today. One that I reckon you'll see several more times in this video. Oh. It's interesting that that guy's doing what he was doing. Um, I guess they automatically charged after the fight was joined? Man, he's still going, isn't he? Oh, they're done. I don't even need to bring the elephants. They got eight guys. Good try, Antigonids. Good try. You know, I was questioning what the hell that guy was doing, but it seems like it might have been really good. Not that I told him to do it or fully understand what it was, but it seemed to have killed the general really quickly. Alright, so this one's getting enslaved, and then we encounter a problem. A problem I discovered in my Rome campaign. This town has stone walls. And you actually cannot break down the gates of stone walls with elephants. The issue then being, where do I drop my forts? Because I wanted to drop them here originally. And, uh... Yeah... Hmm. I guess I just Fort Wall Pella this turn? As weird as that feels? We can't all make it to Pella. That's fine, we're gonna start the siege here. Maintain siege. So this much of the army can make it to the next city, and that is probably enough. There's a guy in there, just a singular guy. 
Poor guy. It's not gonna go well for him. Alright, let's get this started. Send that in. Bring these out to the left. Come around here, put it on fire at will. Form a line, put it on fire at will. You don't want to throw. That's okay. You'll throw eventually. Hey, they actually did it this time. Do the second batch too. Are these guys not throwing? Ridiculous. Although at this point we're running so hard that throwing will likely just kill my own men, so maybe it's fine. I am surprised to see that the enemy has actually taken out 30 of my men. And now his men fear us. It is time to press the attack. More than I thought they'd get considering how bad. What are you guys doing? All right, you thought better of it. Interesting. This is a victory fit for the gods. It's not really fit for the gods. It's kind of unimpressive, but thank you for the flattery, narrator man. This land is ours. Another city conquered, another city enslaved. And now the elephants are done moving. Theoretically, they can make it to Pella, but getting to Pella doesn't actually do anything. It actually is bad. I can't believe it's bad, but it is because we can't knock down these walls with elephants, and this path is open. If there's an open path, you best believe every single Antigonid army is taking it to us, so we have to fort wall this, there is no alternative. And a quick double check, just like sanity check, there's not a path through here. God, it looks like there would be, but there's not. I can see even with this guy, there's nothing there. That forest is inaccessible, it's fake. Yeah, my spy cannot move there, it's not a real tile. Taking some generals out of these settlements, it's looking like at lower tax rates they'll be able to manage. They can. And we can easily come up in Fort Wall, like right here. That one's obvious. That's going to stop them from coming down on the right. And then we drop a Fort Wall here as well. The fort down here is no longer necessary. This one just comes up to garrison the next one. Is there another fort that we've outgrown? No, that was just... No, wait, there is. There's one here. So they're going to come around to garrison in the near future, but they're not able to do it just yet. And here we're going to take on Dion and do an actual siege for this one. We really desperately do not want these elephants ending their turn in the city. That's very important. The closest we're going to get to where we want to go, I think, is going to be like right here behind the fort. So we're going to wait there for the next fight. Any army that can come with us should, although we probably need to leave behind like one guy. I'll leave behind the half unit Hoplites. I'm sure they're fine. Yep, just barely. This city needs a garrison. I have a largely depleted unit of Hoplites that can come do it. Oh, they literally can't. Well, you're garrisoning this city then. The rest of you are going to hop out and try to get movement from a general at some point. They are fine on low, I think? No, not quite. Yes, so. This is definitely coming over to the Elephant's Army. It's the best unit I have in my entire army, like all of the armies of Apparis. This is the toughest guy we've got. He's insane. Really like him. I've got a spare general here that can come north. I might be hiring a Merc for Garrison, which is weird. There are no Mercs. That'll be a slight problem. They're both riding on low currently. What's your influence? I didn't really think about that. It's one. Well, it's enough to fix the one on the right then, but not the one on the left. All right, these can go get retrained apparently. Bring them down. My Creed and Arches are currently garrisoning a city. I cannot believe this. What a fucking outrage. All right, all of the stuff we conquered last turn is able to be ungarrisoned this turn. Yeah, even this one. I can't go forward with this, I would love to, but it can't quite reach. So having taken a moment to reassess the situation, what I need to do is take this guy from the fort, who originally wasn't intended for the fort, bring him down, his influence fixes the settlement. Take this guy whose influence doesn't exist and put him in the fort instead, and I believe we have juggled happiness throughout everything, fort walled the new terrain, and we're good. Looking at everything else, it's time to start moving these units forward. We're going to gather all the units that weren't able to pick up generals into one group. So they'll be faster next turn. So this will be a relatively tiny army that doesn't get as far forward as I'd like, but it's still good enough. This guy is a garrison unit running forward for sure. This one actually comes a full-on family member that I just didn't know I had who could have easily solved the previous problem. Whoops. All right, this unit is going to need a family member to lead it so we can take the family member that was just sitting around and put him in charge of this to give it the movement speed that it's lost because Melgor's fallen behind somehow. Not quite sure what happened to his movement. That glitch was weird. This army is just good in general. It doesn't need anything. It can come forward to support here. 
or it can move further forward. This army should have it handled easily, right? But it has no general. So I'm going to merge these armies with a general in control of it, and that's going to be worth it, I think. And we can definitely make all the rams in the world now. That problem has been sorted. You're done. You're done. I've handled garrisons like four times over. I'm going to trust that I'm done with them. All right, that's everything recruiting, everything building. Don't care about traits and retinues, everything moved. Let's take a look at our new land and destroy all the Macedonian shit in it, because I don't want to recruit here. And I guess briefly to talk about the Macedonian area of recruitment stuff, because I probably should mention that I've looked at it. You can see on the Macedonian recruitment under tier three, we have some Greek Peltas, we have some generic Thurio four away. The thing you really care about here is the Thessalian cavalry, but that requires a fourth tier stables and a third tier Achaean recruitment. That is so far from now that I just don't care. Like by the time this is done and I have enough Thessalian cavalry to fill an army, that would be like, I think 30 plus turns from now at least, right? Because just looking at this, at tier one, that's five turns. So I need to build tier three, it's more than 15 turns, but it's at least 15. Then I need to build tier four of this. Again, it's gonna be more than 16 turns, at least 16. There's no way we're getting to that within the scope of this campaign. And it's just sad. They're so far away that I can't justify pursuing them. Even though, if you look at the Thessalian Cavalry, they are a really, really good unit. It just takes too much to get to them. But I look at charge bonus at 44 and I do get pretty hype, I will admit that. Actually, I will give this bit of feedback, I think this is fair. I don't think any area of recruitment unit should ever be a tier 4 unit. Because the tier 4 recruitment building removes access to AOR, right? The existence of 4th tier stables AOR units feels a little bit unintuitive to me. I would rather see a weaker Thessalian Cavalry at 3rd tier just from a game design standpoint. This is like a super minor thing, honestly, but it sort of rubs me the wrong way, and I can't really articulate why it feels wrong to me. But I hope I sort of conveyed the gist of how it feels off. When my guy tried to route like this, I should have figured out earlier that there's a mountain pass I haven't fort walled yet, and that's kind of fucking important. And I have the ability to fort wall it, thank god, so we have to. The question is who can even get here to man it, because if nobody can, then we have to take a riot for a turn. This cavalry can make it, this garrison can make it out of this city. They're currently on high taxes, meaning that garrison shouldn't be necessary. There we go, juggle complete. Get the cavalry up here. Then get the general back inside the city so that they'll be happy. All right. I think that's the fort wall done, troop movements is done, there's a lot of it to look at. All the taxes and building happened off screen before I started recording. Did I actually destroy all this stuff? I don't think I actually did. I think I just said I was going to. Did one city and got sidetracked? Yeah, of course I did. Next turns will be pretty damn gross if they don't move their units down into this region. If they just keep smashing fort walls over here and moving towards Epirus and freaking out, then I'll be able to fort wall through this and push right. This will obviously take an actual siege, it has stone walls as well. But most of this, and it's fairly tightly clumped, is wood wall garbage. So, let's get into it. Let's see what the Antigonids do, because it's really important to the next turn. <laughs> this is a very strange divide and conquer sort of war. Boats moving, who cares? Got no other vision? Seems great. Seems fantastic. Alright, wonderful. We have a candidate for adoption. Where did he show up? Fine by me, because you're not actually staying here. You, <laughs> I hate to break the news have somewhere to be. Do I have anyone who's down here that can leave easily? Because they're closer to where I want to be in the end. Like, you're governing a city, and you don't actually need to be. Your management's decent, and you're making money. Oh, wait, I've already moved someone last turn. I was already ready for this. Never mind. Good job past me. There's a lot happening. I've made a couple of new boats that were going to be part of the Navy eventually, but more importantly, they're going to make it safer to transport this guy to Africa. I think you can see the reason why, based on what's been happening these last two turns. And he'll get to Africa in about three turns. I don't know that I'll be playing the campaign in three turns if we're winning it a little bit hard at the minute, but I'm still interested in doing it. I'm going to keep playing this as though I was going forever every single time. And another city has grown. Nice. Also, this city's grown. I imagine a lot of them have, but I missed them. I thought I checked all of them, but maybe I got growth last turn from enslaving and didn't actually bother with them. That's my first thought. And finally, another city joins the recruiting pile. Wait, 
Oh, you don't have a barracks. Never mind. Charlcus has a recruiting center, but nothing to do with it. That's sad. So, uh, the Antigonids didn't move their army. And I think at that point, we can confidently say that we've reached the point of no return for this campaign. Because the boats have arrived this time, once I find them. They can reach all the way up here. I don't know how much movement they have left, but they don't really need a whole hell of a lot of it. And they appear to have plenty to go around. But first things first, let's get this city out of the way. It's blocking some movement and it's really no resistance whatsoever. Just 12 guys in there. I wasn't trying to start the fight just yet. I was busy eating sun chips and just moving people slowly, but apparently he wanted to run in and fight and I guess it's fine because, you know, one guy. You can eat sun chips and not pay attention when you're up against 12 guys total. Another one down, another one enslaved. We take everyone out so we see what they look like. We probably leave behind an archer to garrison. Nope, they're just happy to be a part of the empire. Welcome aboard. You no longer need this building. Now, looking at the amount of movement on the ship, if I uh, use it too many times, it will run out of movement. So I need to ferry efficiently. It's gonna be really funny. I'm gonna have to circle around through Pella to block them and then block them on the other side and start a siege. Oh, that's so jank. I love that. So let's just join these armies up. Put almost everything in the other army, right? That seems good enough to me. I may as well take the other two though. We don't really have a reason to leave them behind. Put this on the boat. Drop it off on the other side of Pella. Save, us, save the tiny bit of movement. It seems worth. Start the next attack. Because these aren't stolen walls, these are your run of the mill terrible wooden walls. Alright, I reckon this is going to be yet another steamroller with minimal losses, because I don't really see how it could be anything else. Issue a charge command, and bring out the entire ranged line. All of it. See how it goes for the enemies. And you guys want to actually be attacking the one in the back. Not really paying too much attention to the first guys. Honestly, these guys are trying to shoot the javelin men in the back of the head, just don't worry about them. So, uh, yeah, just throw jabs at that and see how quickly it melts with four units throwing javelins into its back. That does some work, doesn't it? What enemy spearmen? God, I enjoy that. I'm sure it was like almost all the ammunition on four units to kill one, but damn, is it good when you actually outnumber them and get to do that? It's just the even fights where ranged units start feeling bad. All right, so we enslave this and we start figuring out just how far we can move. The answer is pretty damn far. We're gonna take the spy and come down, figure out how many cities are actually down here. Is it just this one or is there another one? There's another one. We're in no rush to deal with that last one though. Like we can just let someone else handle it over the course of turns. They can siege it down. The boat comes back. So the boat comes back and we start loading up the troops. Doesn't really matter who's who, everyone get aboard. Yeah, all of this can fit on at one time. And in fact, Margos the Cruel can fit as well. Everyone get across. And I think there's just yet more coming, so the boat needs to go back. Like, not a ton more, admittedly, but still more. These are really just like small garrison units that'll be joining up in the near future, but they should still come with us. And I think we need to do a reevaluation of all these garrisons on the left because they might not still need to be there. They might have been over garrisons. At 165, it looks like you aren't necessary. Absolutely not. They're over it. At 150, okay. this might be unnecessary. They're completely fine as well, though they aren't fine with normal taxes. 125, again, this one looks like it might be fine. Yeah, completely okay. So all of this gets in the boats as well. Margos is going to take one step out of the way. We're going to drop. We can't drop, but we can go over, then take the units and... Oh, we can't get off manually. Weird. Uh, one guy is just out of movement. A couple of guys are out of movement. That's understandable. I could disband this to get movement back on the ship. I don't think that's relevant. So we've got a huge number of troops across and past Pella. The most important thing is setting up the fort wall. I know for a fact we're going to need a fort here. So there's fort number one. 
Next, we come up and around. This is a little bit sketch. It looks to me like I can drop a fort here, and that'll cover everything. But because it's so sketch, I'm... No, no, looking at this, I'm in the only tile. There's no corner tile there. So they could at best go to here, and then they couldn't even get past. This fort's perfect, actually. Hot ah, damn. And now to keep going, we have to break through on the other side. Does this ever connect? Wait a second, I think I remember this being weird. Can you actually walk down? Oh, you can. Yeah, I definitely need to fort wall then. We have to take out Cirrus with the elephants this turn. These cities can probably be picked off at our own pace by the rest of our armies. Like, the movement speed here isn't great, admittedly. But that's gonna be a couple of units that are actually slower than the rest. This guy's trash, let's pop him out to get a better representation of the army. Yeah, everyone else can actually reach all the way down here by the look of it. Yeah. So we should be able to siege out all three of these cities at our own pace. There's not big garrisons in any of them. The elephants don't have to handle that. Which means the elephant army just wants to go straight across here and carve the path to open up fort walls for us. So, let's get started with that. They have, it looks like, three units. Not quite the full stack that I have with my elephants, so this will be yet another stomp. It's brutal. They've got so much more military than me, but they just can't get past the forts. This is definitely unnecessary, but I'm going to play this as optimally as I can. Oh, they're not going to fight me? Really? Come on, come do something about it. Throw javelins at you, fight me. Come on, do something. Cowards. Finally got them to move. Their bath fighting is so broken. The unit scattered all the way around. It worked, though. Because, I mean, that's not going to be great against the Spearman. Not great at all. So, here's the plan. I've stopped caring. We're just going to run at them. And it's probably going to work out fine. Push through. We're going to keep giving the push through command. Now we have the surface area I was looking for, despite having terrible pathing to get there. And we're going to put all of our javelins directly behind them. At about point blank range. And we're going to see if this works. I'm curious if we can actually just slip in behind them and throw javelins. Because it sounds very effective. Like, yeah, they're a little bit dumb. They're walking against them. They, they seem like they're probably fine. I'm going to give Halt Throw Command. Because I think this will cause them to never fight a melee and throw immediately, right? Right, guys? Right, guys? There we go. So, they're at 60. Or 88. It's hard to tell exactly. No, you can see they're firing not actually working. They're only throwing a couple of javelins. They're really fucking it up. So we have to pull back further than this because the AI is doing that thing where it thinks it doesn't have an angle and fails to throw. So these Akintis, they need to get the fuck out the way and actually get in the line that I originally told them to. And as you can see, the pathfinding struggles with that a little bit. There we go. None of you are really engaged in melee. Try again. What about this time? Do we actually get the javelin volley? Not, not really. Like, you can see there's very few trails appearing. So something about, like, the number of units we have in this pile really messes up their ability to fire, I'm guessing. Hey, you guys, get out. Interesting way you wanted to route. Um, I was trying to just get them out of the line of sight, and I could have stopped this, but I think it's funny, so... Oh, they stopped retreating. They're like, oh, well, I guess if we can't get out, we'll fight to the death. No, not, not quite. That's sort of the reason I told you to route is because you were in the way. Hey, guys, uh, not you. Slide back a little bit because this is embarrassing to wa Very interesting. Just get the fuck out. Y you're embarrassing me in front of my friends. We've confirmed that this is not a good way to control your units for this situation. Oh, also, we won. Apparently, we killed them all while that was happening. No thanks to the javelin ears, that's for damn sure. Another one down, more slaves, and straight on to the next one. My lord! Because we need to get this down to handle the fort wall properly, and then we can see what our movement actually looks like from here. Oh, you didn't even bring spearmen this time. That's not going to go well for you. So, I mean, this is a very simple one. We have spearmen, they don't. We just run in. They die. And we bring our general kind of nearby in case anyone with a low unit count starts to panic for no reason. But this is a completely foregone conclusion. You showed me two different videos, neither of which involved a single enemy horse dying. One more city down, one more city enslaved, and now we can finally start looking around and figure out where to drop these forts. It seems very obviously just directly above us in the mountain pass. That's all we need on this side. 
So we drop the fort here, step back into the army, and we take this spy out for a walk wherever they are. I, I was looking at them like two seconds ago. He's hiding under the city banner. Wait, no, that's the city. He's still there. I'm just having a hard time clicking on him. Let's go look and take it at armies off on this side, because if there aren't any, somehow, that would be very bad for them. Yeah, there's one army here, but it's not even a full stack. Yes, master. Moving. Coming all the way out to the east, we're just seeing Seleucid territory now. And we don't want to border the Seleucids, to be honest. Thinking about this, it might be best just to drop a fort here and turn around. We don't need to keep fighting. Like, we can go further to here, but this is going to be a gross fort wall that's a bit loose. There's going to be another one here, another one there. It gets us two cities, but we have to actually siege this. It's worth doing. It's a hassle, but it's worth doing. All right, yeah, let's go forward. Let's knock out the last city. Begin the siege. Start the assault. It's just two spearmen. This should be yet another steamroll, and it's worth the hassle that is going to be the pile of forts this requires. All right, we're going to see if this goes as badly for them as I think it will. We're pretty low on units at this point because we've been being very, very careless with these military but it'll probably still be fine. By the time the elephants get here, these guys should already be tired. Interesting movements I'm getting out of that, by the way. No, absolutely not. The elephants are not fighting you head on. Don't be ridiculous. Yeah, they got very confused, I guess. I don't know what happened there. The elephants are going to come back, but not all the way back, I imagine. Oh, my guys are routing. Embarrassing. Very, very embarrassing. Elephants, you want to save this? Because, I mean, I know you're pretty good. Back off here. Charge again. I think that might have done it. Elephants back off. You rampaging is the last thing I want, and all of you are bloody, so just get the fuck out entirely. It looks like they're still losing, which is embarrassing for them. Oh, I have a unit of 304 away, just didn't think about. I'll bring in the elite guy, too. Send the attacks here, and that'll be the win. Definitely sloppier than it should have been, more losses than it should have been, but we're gonna be fine, I imagine. Yep. Probably would have just won that convincingly with the elephants if I had noticed my last unit of Thurio Foroi that I just forgot to send in. Whoops. So that's Philippoid down. Obviously, we enslave it. And now the awkward thing is we're pretty low on movement. We can make the forts. So that's good, because we need to. That's adjacent to the port, so I have to take one step further. I have to go to here to make a fort. And you can see that we're out of movement pretty much completely. Which could lead in some really awkward follow-up problems. We can reach here and make this fort this turn on this guy. It's obviously not what I want to do with my time, but since I'm worried, no- Ooh, you can't make a fort there. First things first, I'm tired of retraining a key and hoplites, they can't even reach the fort. Yes. Gonna have to be the jab cab then. Second thing second, oh god, oh Jesus, oh fuck, can anyone reach? Yes, good. Alright, so we have to come over here and build this fort, that one's non-negotiable. That's the second fort done. This fort does its job. This fort does its job. We need to fort this pass. And this is a fake tile. This tree isn't real. You can't actually walk there. So this should be like a perfect place for a fort then. Build that and you can stay in it this turn. I hate it, but it's gonna have to be like that. And again, no one can reach the other fort this turn except for the elephants. I'm not putting the elephants in a fort. I'm putting the elephants under a general for maximum speed. The rest of the army doesn't matter as much, but I mean, probably go with the general anyway, right? With the archer garrison, that's still not enough in Philippoi. They're furious. Quick break from war to lower the taxes and destroy all their buildings. And obviously, none of them are thrilled about this. Right, so Thessalonica's fine. These other two need garrisons. You can just barely make it here, so since you can't get anywhere else, not good enough. We'll send someone else then. Archers are straight up terrible. That'll handle that. For the time being, I have some relatively low capacity mercs. They want to be garrisons anyway. Send them up to the forts. I think the other one can reach. Yes, perfect. Okay, so fort wall manned. Garrisons still need a little bit of work. This cab can make it to Berg. Let's see if that's enough. There's no way it's pronounced Berg, by the way, but that is enough. The capital finally grows. And by the way, I realized while I was looking at this at some point, if you look at the exact way that it works when I click the uh, recruitment buttons, 
It's not to scale. I don't have that setting ticked in the remastered options. If I recruit this group of 122 guys, I should drop down to just under 6,600, but I don't. So I'm gonna see if you can toggle that for my next campaign, because even though it would have been really bad for me in this campaign, it's not... I don't like it, right? Like, it should be the number of units I'm recruiting. So hopefully that doesn't crash your game and you're allowed to do that with this mod. The generals here can make it decently far. The two spearmen with them can't move for shit. They are completely out of movement. Just after that little bit. We're looking at a total garrison for all of these cities of just eight guys. So I'm gonna take this guy. Come start the siege here. It looks like these other two can't make it. Surely one of them can, yes. What about you? Where's your army make it to? Your army makes it wherever the hell you want to be. That's only two guys, so we only need two guys to handle that one. If we can build a ram, we can't. So we need a third person just to come build the ram. Come in, Slinger. Is that enough? Yes. Next, same general deal. Create an archers, pair of spearmen. Come up to this, because you're the only army that's making it this far for sure. One ram, actually fuck rams, pile of ladders. They have three units, can't tell what they are. We know this needs two spearmen and a slinger just to invade the city and build a ram on time, so this has to go here. And now we check, the ram gets built in one turn, good, good, good. We need this siege to start. Two spearmen. It looks like we have to send all of this and the family members just to build a ram, probably. But send this. Start the ram, can't do it yet. Funnel in family members until the ram can be built. I'm going to assume I'll need at least two, so I'll bring the two most populous ones. Ram's done in one. So these two are the only excess soldiers we have to do all of these sieges. What I'm planning on doing is these armies are all bigger than the ones they're sieging, so they won't sally out. So I'll be like, attack here, run the army over for reinforcements, attack, run up for reinforcements, same thing over and over again, and knock down all four of these next turn. Right, this isn't happy. I have a guy with one influence here who can come be the governor for a turn. Hey, that's what they wanted to hear. That's all they needed. Oh yeah, we never did deal with Pella, did we? Can't tell, but there's the empty fort above Pella, too. Any mercs available? Oh, shit! <laughs> yes. Yes, they are. So first, I'm going to hire just the Queen and Archers. They come in with full movement, so I can run this up to here. And in fact, I can start a siege with just the mercs. And what better use for money than conquering cities, right? I'm going to take the Peltos, 304-Roy, Hoplites. That should probably be enough. Looking at this siege, we send these four units. I imagine they can get a ram built and do this. But you'd rather have a pile of ladders and they can build plenty of ladders. If they get sallied against, I can play this correctly and win. So we need to hire one more guy just to throw him in that fort over there. I would like the Tarantine Cavalry because they're actually a half decent units. Fort manned. Okay, are there any other mysteriously unmanned forts on my border that I just built? Because that was a big problem. Pella is also under siege now. There's kind of a lot happening. Am I positively certain you can't walk through any of this? Yes, master. Yeah, you can't. It looks like there'd be something, but there's not. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I think that's it for this turn then. And also, I think that's probably it for the Antigonids. If we go over to specifically the Antigonids compared to us, you can see we surpassed them. We've steamrolled them so hard in the last three turns, their overall rank dropped. But if we go specifically to territory, you can see a much more exaggerated difference. That's pretty good. Militarily, they're still way bigger than us. Like in a straight fight, their six stacks against my three, I would lose. But we're not having that straight fight. But yeah, that territory chart says everything that needs to be said, doesn't it? I'm surprised they still have what appears to be like 20 territories. But I think this is where I'll actually call it from here, because to get further in, like we need to reposition the elephants for the next war, which I think is actually finishing off Athens on our way down to start taking out the Greek city-states and consolidate everything properly. Not sure. Maybe we just like come over here, because there's some really funny shit you can do with elephants, right? Coming down here, like, if you just landed and exterminated and destroyed everything, you can make so much money at the Nile Delta. It's the same thing up here on the Anatolian coastline. 
There's a lot of funny, powerful stuff I could do at this point. Same thing, just generally everywhere. There's so many dense cities for elephants, it's fantastic. But I think I'm well and truly happy to end the campaign now with this episode. Last episode I ended, I wanted to use elephants more. I wanted to keep playing. Now in two, no, three turns, I have taken all of this territory. And these cities that are under siege, they're all guaranteed dead next turn. We're completely fort walled in. The AI is not equipped to get through this shit. It's brutal. It's absolutely brutally efficient. Those elephants were not just like a funny idea. They weren't just kind of good. They were the most powerful decision I could possibly have made. I'm very happy with this campaign. I had a blast with the Achaean League. Very fun time with 0.6. Because the games will be getting updated and it may or may not be breaking saves, I'm going to put this down for now. And I'm saying that this is the finale. I'm happy to stop here this time. I don't feel like I'm going to end this and long to conquer more. I feel like we did what we came here to do. I don't know what comes next. It's definitely more Rome Total Realism, Imperium's Rect in version 0.6. Because the mod is absolutely fantastic. And I'm really looking forward to playing more. It won't be anything that starts off in Greece. Because... It might be cool to like play the Aetolians or Boeotians or Athens or Sparta. Those are all cool factions. I would love to play them someday. But if you look at them, right, like Sparta, you kill a Keenan League immediately, right? Because they're next to you and they're weak. Same with Ellis, right? And then that's just the same start position. Athens, again, pretty similar. You're going to end up at the same point relatively soon. Anyone who starts on my screen right now, other than the Antigonids, all end up playing the same game pretty quickly. So... The roster differences are meaningful. The start's different in the first five turns for sure. But relatively quickly, we get back on the same path. So I want to go play a Hellenic faction that is not on my screen at the start of the game. I want to go find someone small and interesting and play with them. And I have like a week and a half to decide on who, so I will likely change my mind at some point. Because if you're wondering, I'm recording this like three or four days after 0.6 goes live, meaning that there's going to be a lot of time before I need to upload the next campaign. For me to look at what other people are playing and see what's not getting covered, to give some love to that. Look at what other people are playing and see if anything gets me hyped up for something specific. I've talked specifically with people about starting as somebody like Akragus, who's dead. They're uh, the crab flag that started here. And uh, the scene would be funny. Kios would be funny right here. I don't even know if those are proper starting factions. If they are, I'm seriously considering them. If they're not, though, for my second campaign, I don't want to go into the I&I &I and turn off, turn on something that's not even being intended by the devs to be played yet, right? I want to play something that is fully developed and put on the main screen of the game when you start it up. Something that's just been fully reworked, so something in the Greek world. And I'll figure it out based on the comments and the discussions that I see between now and then. But for now, I'm done, because I'm clearly rambling. Thank you for watching. Thank you to the mod team for this fantastic mod. Thank you to my Patreon supporters, Evan and Jeffrey B. I hope you've had as much fun watching this as I have had playing it, and I'll see you in the next one.